Challenging practice. Michelle got an average of 80 on two tests. What score must she get on the third test so that the average score for the three tests is the same as the average score for the first two tests? In order for that to happen, the third test has to be 80 as well. So let's check. For example, test 1, she has 90. Test 2, she has 70. The average for the first two tests would be 80. In order to have the same average score again, she has to have 80 for the third test. Problem solving. Question 2. How many students are in the class? So for that, we have to first figure out how many data points we have. So we have one student with a shoe size of 2, three students with a shoe size of 2.5, five students with a shoe size of 3, 10 students with a shoe size of 3.5, four students with a shoe size of 4, and two students with a shoe size of 4.5. If you add up the numbers 1, 3, 5, 10, 4, and 2, you will get 25. So there are 25 students in a class. So what is the mode? The mode would be the number that has the highest occurrence. There will be three and a half. How many students in the class were size three and a half? There will be 10. Suppose you look at 100 pairs of shoes for the grade. So how many pairs of three and a half would there be? So out of 25 students, 10 students are wearing three and a half. So if we have the same probability, out of 100 students, 40 will be wearing three and a half. So I do, we do this by using the same concept of equivalent fractions. So times four, so this will be times four. So the answer is 40. Problem solving. Question one. The average height of Andy, Chen, and Chao Si is 145 centimeters. Andy and Chen are of the same height, and Chao Si is, is 15 centimeters taller than Andy. So first, let's find the total height of the three boys. That would be 145 times 3. So 145 times 3, that would be 435 centimeters. Now we have to do our bar modeling. So for, for bar modeling, we have three boys here, Andy, Chen, and Chao Si. So we have Andy and Chen. They have the same height. And Chao Si is 15 centimeters taller. So this is 15. And together we know it is 434, 435 centimeters. So to write our equations down, we have one unit here, one unit here, and one unit here. So together we have three units. So three units will be equals to 435 subtract 15. 15 is here. So this will be 420. So if three units is equal to 420, one unit will be 420 divided by three. So 420 divided by 3, you can break this into 300 and 120. So 420 divided by 3, so we have 100 in each group. So we have 120 remaining, we are going to have 40 in each group. So the answer is 140. So let's look at 140. So 140 would be here, here, and here. So let's look at our answers. So and this height, and this height would be 140 centimeters, and Chelsea's height would be 140 plus 15. So 155 centimeters. Problem solving. Question two. So Eduardo has three times as many stamps as Sally. The average number of stamps they have is 450. How many more stamps does Eduardo have than Sally? So over here, the average number of stamps they have is 450. So the total number of stamps that they have is 900. 
So we're going to do our modeling over here. So Eduardo has three times as many. So one, two, three, three times as many as Sally. And together they have 900. So how many units do we have over here? We have one unit, one unit, one unit, and one unit. We have four units over here, and four units is equal to 900. So one unit has to be 900 divided by 4, which is 225. And in this case, we have to find out how many more stamps does Eduardo have than Sally. So Eduardo has two more units than Sally. And two more units is equal to 225 times 2, which is 450. Question 3 is slightly more challenging. So for question 3, we have two bags over here, bag A and bag B. So they each have two marbles, one white and one red, one white and one red. The probability of getting a white marble from bag A is one half. The probability of getting a red marble from bag A is also one half. Similarly, the probability of getting a white marble from bag B is one half. The probability of getting a red marble from bag B is also one half. So now, we want to get two white marbles. What is the probability? So we can only do it by getting one white from bag A and one white from bag B. So the probability of getting a white from bag A is one half. The probability of getting a white one from bag B is also one half. So the probability is one fourth. B is slightly more tricky. So to get one red and one white, we can have a red and a white or a white and a red. So we can have a red from bag A and a white from bag B or a white from bag A and a red from bag B. That will still give us one red and one white. So what is the probability of getting a red from bag A? One half. And a, bag, and a white from bag B? One half. What is the probability of getting a white from bag A followed by a red from bag B? It's one half times one half. So we can either, either one works. So the answer would be one fourth plus one fourth, which is one half. So again, this question is very tricky. So it is okay to go through this a few more times.